monstrous facilities called data centers are springing up everywhere. To me, it feels like the wild, wild west. They already devour massive amounts of energy. And now that AI is part of the equation, their power consumption is skyrocketing. By 2028, we are expecting to double or possibly even triple the amount of energy that's going towards data centers. If you check your bank accounts, upload your photos, text a quick message to a friend, you are relying on data safely going where it's supposed to or coming to you securely. A typical laptop can store 512 gigabytes of data. The average person does is almost two gigabytes of data every day. This is a lot, so we invented a solution. A lot of data is no longer stored on your device locally. You connect it to the cloud, and it will get sent across lots of different internet infrastructure to a data center. This is where the infinite weightlessness of the cloud comes down to Earth, in a data center. One or more buildings house a centralized computing infrastructure, including physical servers, maximum storage options, and other networking equipment, all used to process our wealth of information. They also protect your data from environmental hazards like heat, humidity, and water leaks. They may look and feel like something out of a sci-fi movie, but they're really just super warehouses for computers. These are rows and rows of computers that are within cages, almost like little prisons that you have. And each of these cages is owned by a customer, similar to renting an apartment, except here you rent a cage and you can put your computing equipment into that cage. These can be often the size of several football fields, so data centers themselves are these cavernous buildings. Northern Virginia has the highest concentration of data centers in the world, handling about 70% of the world's internet traffic. Until recently, it's been quite easy for entities in the United States to construct data centers. A lot of counties like them because they pay property taxes and they create a few jobs. They're clustered over just a few square miles. The area is known as Data Center Alley. To enter one of these centers, you must pass through many layers of security, even after exterior fences. There'll be even certain parts within a data center that might have extra layers of security because maybe they've got extra sensitive data like national security data. Our personal information and our economy depends on the information that is being stored within these centers. Imagine the impact if a security failure compromised or wiped Amazon's data, or if a nationwide medical provider lost all its records due to a sudden power outage. With so much of the world's critical information at stake, data centers may define the future. Officials in Virginia's Loudoun County say that by 2027, $8.77 trillion of the global economy will depend on data centers. The world has already spent around $2.5 trillion building them in just the last 10 years. And Data Center Alley already has close to 550 hyperscale facilities. These structures usually house at least 5,000 servers. But why are there so many data centers in Northern Virginia? Location, location, location. Data Center Alley has it all. You want to have ample access to reliable power. And so that's sort of the first criteria that you need to have. So you want to be in a place that's somewhat immune from natural disasters. So worst thing for a data center is an earthquake. You want to have lots of network connectivity and the fourth is you want to have a big customer base. Northern Virginia has a long history of building internet infrastructure. The early internet was actually built out of DC and in the surrounding area in Northern Virginia. They're located in close proximity to the seat of power, to the government, and also to defense contractors as well. The fifth is having a policy system in place that is open to building new systems. That's another thing where the United States is, is far different than many other countries. The U.S. has over 10 times more data centers, 5,388 at last count, than any other country. 
There's also just the idea of sovereignty, which is people want access to their data. They want it to be within their borders. There is even talk of installing data centers on the moon. Many experts are skeptical, at least for now. The moon is far away. That would make it very difficult to send and receive the data. That may seem far-fetched, but the demand for data centers is about to boom even more with the rise of artificial intelligence. AI is a field of computer science that is focused on using computers to automate certain tasks. AI is expected to increase our data usage and our need for data centers exponentially. OpenAI's ChatGPT needs vast amounts of text to generate human-like responses to our questions. The average query accounts for 4,000 bytes of data, and there are millions of requests every day. AI-generated images like these are even more data costly. The average size for a single HD image is two megabytes. My group at MIT has been doing a lot of research on ways to make AI more efficient, be a better member of society without compromising performance. The broader AI market, which includes image generation, was valued at over $66 billion in 2024. The AI breakthrough is putting real pressure on our data centers. Some analysts suggest that just 3% of our storage space is currently vacant. And some estimate that AI could drive our storage needs up by as much as 33% every year. And there is an even bigger challenge ahead, powering them. Data centers in the United States use about 4.5% of all US energy. And there are numerous projections that are saying that this energy use is going to grow to somewhere between 10 to 15 percent just within the next three years. So by 2028, we are expecting to double or possibly even triple the amount of energy that's going towards data centers. So far, power companies have been able to keep up with the data center's demands. In Virginia, currently data centers consume about 26 percent of the state's power consumption. And the portion of the pie going to data centers has been increasing over time. Power companies have traditionally relied on fossil fuels, like coal. Many mines were scheduled to close, but may now stay open to meet the data center needs. There have been plans in place for several years to slowly decarbonize the grid in Virginia and to take off offline the, the coal-fired power plants, and now those plans are being delayed somewhat inevitably. They keep changing the date to later. Microsoft is considering using natural gas with carbon capture for a power supply. And both Chevron and Exxon are developing natural gas plans. When you look at the natural gas side, its operations are more efficient perhaps than some of the other fossil fuels out there, but the collection and getting this out of the ground is a pretty expensive process. The data center energy demand could set back the world's decarbonization goals.